Socio. My name is Danielle Kolb, and I want to welcome you to our next Learn and Play at the Gilcrease Museum. Today we're going to be talking all about Cherokee storytelling. We're going to take a look at one of the pieces of artwork in our collection and we're going to learn how to make our own pair of buzzard wings so that you can retell the story that we're going to learn today. The painting that we are looking at today is by Joseph Henry Sharp. The title of this painting is The Story of the War Robe. Now in this painting, we're going to see a group of men sitting around and in the middle of them is a hide. And if you take a look at this hide, you'll see that there are images drawn on it. In this painting, we are seeing an example of Native American storytelling. Some Native American groups pass on knowledge through traditions by telling stories and telling the stories over and over again. Sometimes you see pictures painted on things like hides, so that story is always recorded and can be told using that hide over and over again. Let's take a closer look at some of the details that make up the painting Story of the War Robe. How many men do you see seated in this painting? What else do you see in this painting? What colors do you see? That's right, there's lots of oranges and greens. What are some other items that you see in here? Can you find the drum? Can you find a pair of moccasins? Now let's talk about the items that are actually drawn onto the hide. What do you see on the hide? Can you find the horse? Can you see feathers anywhere in this painting? There's lots of details that make up this beautiful painting, the story of the war robe. And we can see how important storytelling is through this painting. Many different Native American tribes use storytelling to pass on our traditions. But today, we're gonna focus on Cherokee storytelling. We're gonna get to hear a traditional Cherokee story and we're gonna make a craft so that way you can use your wings to retell this story. Cherokees have told stories for thousands upon thousands of years. And today, we're gonna to get a chance to talk with one of my favorite storytellers, Janelle, and she's going to share with us the traditional story of how the mountains in the Cherokee homelands were created. OCO, I'm here with my good friend Janelle, and I love listening to all the stories that Janelle tells. So welcome, Janelle, to our Learn and Play. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. So can you tell me a little bit about what you do as a storyteller? I will. Um, I've been telling stories since way back in the 1900s, right around 1900. <laughs> is when I first started telling stories. Um, I was Miss Cherokee that year and my talent was storytelling. So I, that's where it all started for me. And for the last 20 years now, I have gotten to go around and tell stories all across the United States. Um, it's, it's taken me a lot of places and I never would have thought, you know, as a young kid that I would have had this much time being a storyteller. You know, I would never have thought this would happen. Um, right now with my job, what I do is I share culture. I work for Cherokee Nation businesses in the cultural tourism department, and I'm a tour guide. And so an interpretive guide is what they call me, my professional name. But I get to go around and talk to people about the history of Cherokee people. I get to have um, big tours that come in from out of state. I talk to people that come from local schools. I talk to elder groups, but we talk a little bit about the culture. And in that, sometimes I do get to tell my stories to these people even still yet, you know, with my regular day-to-day -day job. So Janelle, can you tell us why storytelling is so important to Cherokee people? Yes, yes I can. Um, at one time, storytelling for my people, I'm actually a member of the United Ketua Band Cherokee Indians of Oklahoma. 
Um, but there are three federally recognized Cherokee tribes, the Eastern Band, Cherokees that are still in North Carolina, Cherokee Nation here in Oklahoma, and the Katu is here in Oklahoma. We were all one tribe at one time. Um, all the Cherokee people, we were from the Southeast part of what's now the United States. And we didn't have a formal writing system before we came in contact with European people. So the way that we would keep track of our history was through an oral tradition. So a lot of our stories, um, they were not only to teach lessons, but some of them were specifically for historical reasons to keep track of things that happened to us mm -hmm. as a people. We would pass down these stories from one generation to the next, an oral tradition. And the storytellers actually had to tell the stories in a very specific way, because as a storyteller at that time, you were keeping track of history. You were keeping track of the things that had happened to your people. And so you had to um, give these stories back to the people in a very specific manner. So today it's more about entertainment purposes, but at one time it really was how we kept track of things that happened to us as a people. So if we're keeping track of things that happen, what are some things that Cherokee stories talk about? Well, our Cherokee stories, um, I call them creation stories and a lot of other people do too. And the reason we tell them or call them creation stories is because it tells how something came to be the way that it is, how it was created. It could be something in the sky, maybe the stars um, or something that you see in the sky. It could also be something on the land, why land formation is as it is, or maybe why an animal looks the way that it does. Okay, awesome. So we we did hear a creation story the other day at the Gilchrist Museum, got to talk to Martha Berry, and she mm -hmm. talked to us about the water spider and how the water spider brought fire. Mm -hmm. um, and you just mentioned something really, I think, important is we talk about land and how important the land is and how, you know, for Cherokee people, we know that we're here to take care of the land. Mm -hmm. But the land didn't always look like it does now. And right. I know that there's a really interesting animal that actually helps form the earth. So can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yes, and one of our creation stories, we talk about how the earth came to be because it was covered underwater at one time. Um, the animals were here before people, and so the animals were looking for another place to live. Um, through things that the animals did, there was land that happened to come up from under the water. When this land started to spread across the earth, it was very soft. It was a very soft mud-like. And the animals who weren't yet on the earth, they were in the sky vault above the earth. They were waiting for the earth to harden so they could come down from the sky vault and live there. As they were waiting, um, it seemed to take forever for the mud to get harder. So they sent down one of their larger birds, um, Suli. And in English, we call him the buzzard. So they sent Suli down to fly around the earth and they were hoping that as he would fly, he would create this wind that would help to harden the earth up faster. So as Suli was flying around the earth, um, he continued to help harden that mud up. But as he was flying, he got really tired. And Suli, as he was flying and getting more and more tired, he began to get lower and lower to the earth until he was so low that every time his wings would go down, they would hit the earth in that soft mud and create a valley. And as he would bring his wings back up, he would create these mountains. And so he was flying so low that he continued to create these mountains everywhere. And the animals called out to Suli and said, come back, you know, you're going to have mountains everywhere. And so he did. But the mountains that he created in that creation story, we believe those are the mountains that we came from, the Smoky Mountains that are now in um, what's now known as the United States. That's where our people originally came from. And we believe that he's the one that made those mountains for us. That's so cool. And one thing I love <laughs> about stories is that, you know, when we tell these stories, it's not like there's one storyteller and then they just always tell them. But when you share a story, you know, you are then supposed to share it with someone else. And that's how mm -hmm. our culture is passed on. In Cherokee, when we want to say thank you, we say wado. So Janelle, I want to give you a big wado. Thank you for coming today and telling us a little bit about Cherokee storytelling and sharing with us about how Buzzard helped create the earth. All right. Well, hawa, wado. Thank you guys for inviting me. I hope that you guys take these stories with you and continue to tell them. That's the only way they'll stay alive. Donna Doggo, I'll see you when I see you again. <laughs>
Thank you, Janelle, for sharing that story with us. Now we're going to head up to the Creative Learning Center and we're going to learn how to make our own wings so that way we can retell the story that Janelle just shared with us. Now that we're inside the Creative Learning Center, let's talk about the materials that we're going to use today. We're going to use a glue stick. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need colored construction paper and you'll choose the construction paper based on what colors you want to use but today I'm going to be using a rainbow spread and then you'll also need either a piece of regular poster board or today I'm actually going to use a foam core poster board so that way it's a little sturdier. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you need to cut this foam board in half. So if you can't do this yourself, be sure to grab an adult that can cut it and we're just going to cut it straight down the middle in half. You can use a pair of scissors, but today I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife because it's easier to cut the foam cord. Now that we have our poster board cut in half, what we're going to do is we are going to trace the outline of the wings. So what we're going to do for the wings is we are going to use our straight edge and we are going to just cut a straight line across here. We want it to be thin enough about two widths of your arm so that way when we put our feathers on there you're not going to see the back of this cardboard. So now that I have a rough line I'm just going to cut straight across on both. And this line doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see this. It's going to be behind all of our feathers. So just like before after we've cut we need to cut all the way through that foam core. We can set our trash to the side. And then we're going to use this one as a template for our other wing. So now that we have our two pieces that we are going to use to make the wings, we just need to set one aside because we're going to do these one at a time. So I'm going to set one of my wings down and I'm going to set this just to the side so that way we can talk about our feathers. So earlier in our video we learned how to say buzzer, suli, and then we also learned how to say feather, uki dali. So we're going to cut out our own feathers so that way we can make our own buzzard wings. Now to do this you need construction paper. If you have regular size construction paper, um, you can cut out one feather from it if you want it to be large. If you want to do lots of smaller feathers, you can fold them in half. Now the construction paper that I have is pretty big. It's 11 by 17. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold it into three. Fold once, fold twice and then I'm going to take my scissors. Now to make these feathers what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle and we're going to round the edge until we come to the middle and we're going to come to a point. Then we're going to flip it over, we're going to start in the middle again, we're going to just slowly come in on a rounded edge until we get to that point. Now if you want your feather to be thinner all you have to do is cut this down. You can have wide feathers, you can have thin feathers, whatever you want your wings to look like. But if you do this, remember we're just going to round it out and come to a point. And then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do this to the other side. So since we fold it in three, we now have three feathers for us to attach to our wings. I'm going to be using a rainbow assortment today, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to cut all my feathers out, and then we're going to attach them to the buzzard's wing.
So now that we have cut all of our feathers, we are going to attach them to our wing. So we're gonna get our wing and we are gonna take our glue stick and we're just gonna create a whole line across and we're gonna fan our feathers out. Okay, so now that we have our line of glue out, we're gonna lay down our first layer of feathers. Now you can make your wing look however you want. If you wanna have three rows of feathers or if you wanna have um, more than that. Now for me, I have lots of different colors. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna have six layers. I'm gonna start with purple first. Now purple in Cherokee is Adahalage. So let's take our Adahalage color and let's lay down our line. When we're doing this, this is gonna be the inside of the arm that's going to be closest to the shoulder. So I wanna make sure that this leaf or this feather is going straight down and away. And then I'm gonna do all the rest of the feathers pointing out until I get to the end. And the end feather is gonna be going very far out. So let's just stick the rest of these on here. Okay, now we have our first row down. So remember the one that's gonna be close to our shoulder points out a little bit, and then the one on the end points straight out. So we're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to put another glue line on top of here. I'm going to lay down my next layer. So now that we have our second row down, you can see that we're just going to repeat this all the way up. So very quickly, let's go over the rest of the colors. So the color that comes after Sakona Gay is green, which is E.J.E. used. Then we have Delonage. We have A Delonage. And then we have Gigage. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna add the rest all the way up, and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to attach straps so that way you can put them on your arms. Now that we're doing our top row, we want to make sure that it's coming up a little bit so that way we're not seeing any of the poster board. So make sure that on the very top, you can't see the poster board showing through. So now that we have finished one side of our wing, we can see that this flat part is going to be the piece of the wing that goes closest to our shoulders. And so all we need to do is we need to lay down the rest of the feathers on the other side. Now let's look at the back and see how we're actually going to attach it to your arms. So what we're gonna do is we're basically just going to create paper bands that are gonna go around the arm and they're gonna be attached to the back so that way you can slip your arm through and put the wings on. So let's cut a strip of paper just from that big cardboard. Um, you can use your poster board or you can use the construction paper. And we're gonna cut it all the way down and then we'll measure it. We want to cut this about three inches wide. You are going to need two strips for each arm. So I have two for my next arm, and then we're gonna use these two for the first arm. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your strip and you want to wrap it around um, your arm at the place where it's gonna go. So if it's gonna go all the way up here by your shoulder for the first one, you need to wrap it all the way around your arm. And then the next one that's gonna be further out towards the tip of the wing is gonna be a little bit smaller because your arm is smaller down here. So you're gonna measure both and then you're going to clip the piece of paper right where your measure is. Now that we've measured, we're gonna take our glue stick. We're gonna put some glue on the end, put a lot on there. We're gonna wrap this around 
and we're going to hold this, press it down, and you want to hold this for a couple minutes until it dries. So now that we have our two rings glued, we are going to put glue on the back. We're going to put the first one far up. This is the one that's going to go up by your shoulder. And then we're going to put glue on the other one that's going to be more towards your wrist. Now, depending on how long your arm is, is going to decide where you put it. So if you're a lot younger, you're going to put these closer together, or if you have a longer arm, you can put it out. Now, this is just going to slide on your arm, and you are going to have a wing that you can use to tell this story. So remember in this story, we talk about Buzzard, when he goes really low to the ground, and his wings touch, and he creates deep valleys. And when Buzzard comes up, and he lifts his wings, he creates mountains. So you can practice with your own buzzard wings, work on retelling the story, and I hope you enjoyed being with the Gilcrease Museum today as we learned a little bit more about Native American storytelling.